Thank you, Representative Underwood. Uh, Ms. Lurie, you're recognized for five minutes. Well, thank you, Chairman Takano, um, and thank you to our witnesses today. Um, I'd like to first just respond to my colleague, um, Mr. Elsie's remarks. Um, you know, as Mr. Elsie, I'm a veteran myself. As Mr. Elsie, I'm a graduate of the United States Naval Academy myself, and he referenced those in a broad brush. Anyone who held command in the military would, of course, feel the same way as he does, um, as someone who's held command in the military myself. Um, I, I do not share his views, and, and I would say that I'm, I'm glad as a veteran and someone who had the opportunity to serve beside um, so many others who are now veterans or continue to serve on active duty and will transition, um, that this committee is really looking at ways that they're susceptible. And, you know, it's shocking to me um, that any members of this committee would not want to better understand how veterans can be susceptible. Were we talking today about financial crimes and the way that veterans are exploited due to their benefits? Uh, would that be contentious? Um, I think that the fact that we're having this hearing today you know, does show, in fact, um, that, that those members of this committee who find this to be a serious issue do truly value the service of our veterans and want to make sure that we protect them in um, any way possible. And, you know, I'd also like to say that I was I was somewhat uh, shocked and aghast by the comments made by, by Mr. Rosendale. Um, and, you know, I, I really appreciate um, you know, Mr. Butler's testimony. Mr. Butler, um, who um, in, invited you as a witness to this hearing today? I believe it was ranking member Boss who did. Okay, so you are the Republican witness invited to this hearing today. Correct. Yes, um, and you know, I, I know that you did respond to Mr. Banks' comments, um, but you were not given the opportunity to respond to Mr. Rosendahl's and Mr. Elsie's. Um, do you have any response to those comments um, from your perspective and as a representative of a VSO that serves so many veterans in our community? Yeah, thank you. I mean, I think there's a lot of issues that uh, one, need to be addressed, and two, I think we are actually addressing all of the, the issues that he talked about, I certainly encourage him to reach out to our office. Uh, we uh, have a priority as all of these uh, issues that he mentioned, uh, employment, mental health care. It's not as if we can only focus on one issue. There's a wide range of issues that the veteran community uh, have as uh, areas of focus. We certainly hear that from our community, uh, from IAVA members, and we're trying to focus on all of those. And I think that this hearing uh, and focusing on this issue actually reaches across many of them. And so I think it's important that we uh, reach widely in terms of our efforts uh, to address the needs of the veteran community. Well, thank you, Mr. Butner. And I saw Lieutenant Colonel, Colonel Plesner um, nodding. Did you also want to re reply? Yes, ma'am. I agree with Jeremy. I mean, we're the United States of America and we can walk and chew gum at the same time. So it's not like we can either do this or that within um, taking care of veterans. And this is an important issue. Um, you know, and we should never be, be afraid to seek the truth and take a look at what's going on within our society and especially within the veteran community. And, you know, I, when I was talking to friends about this issue, I almost equated it to like cancer. You go see your general practitioner, they say, hey, we found a lump in your body. And if your general practitioner says, oh, hey, don't worry about it, you're not going to not worry about it, right? You're going to rush to an oncologist, you're going to go get some tests, you're going to determine the scope and scale of what this growth might be. And if it is cancerous, you're going to develop a strategy to defeat it. And that's all we're asking this committee to do. Um, and we applaud the efforts of, of launching this investigation because it is important. It is important to know uh, the scope and scale of, of these domestic violent extremist groups and their efforts to recruit veterans. Well, thank you. And in the time remaining, I, I don't know if uh, Mr. Jones or Dr. Miller Idris would, would also like to, to make any remarks. And I, I uh, just to add, uh, Representative Luria, the, the, the questions I have are really with an in that the data does show an increase in the percentage of plots and attacks, terrorist plots and attacks in the U.S., mm -hmm. domestic ones, involving uh, veterans as well as active duty and reservists. And the question I think we've got to start addressing is why is that the case? And how do we, as uh, Colonel Plunzer just noted, how do we start addressing those issues? The same way over the last couple of decades, we've identified concerns about PTSD, about sexual assault, about suicides, and about other issues. What's the scale and scope of the problem? What's causing it? And then how do we address solutions to it? Because as someone who's served in Afghanistan among Somalia and other locations, I think our veterans have every right to the services required to help address the, the challenges here. Thank you, Ms. Laurie. I would just add that uh, uh, in the German investigations on this question, when the numbers also were relatively small, but the German defense minister's quote was, Every case is a scandal um, when we're talking about the armed forces, military, or veterans, or our security services. We we don't want just 
proportionate numbers. We want much, much less vulnerability among our veterans, and it's our duty to uh, help them be less susceptible to the propaganda and manipulative efforts. So thank you. Well, thank you. And thank you to all of our witnesses. And just in closing, I'll reiterate what my colleague Ms. Underwood said, um, that you know we, we started investigating this issue, looking into this issue, looking into the vulnerability of our veterans who we care about deeply, you know, long before the events of, of January 6th. And I think that we can all see that was a very public display um, of this type of extremism. Um, but I do applaud the, the chair um, for his continuing work um, for the two Congresses that have been on this committee. And I yield back. Thank you, Ms. Luria. Uh, I do not see that we have any further uh, questioning uh, of the present panel. And so I'd like to excuse